Slots are another one of those really useful things in Python that are criminally underused. Not an awful lot of people have heard of them, and if you have seen them before, you might be a bit confused as to how they actually work and what they actually do. So this video is going to show you how to set them up, what they're used for, and how specifically they're useful. So we're just going to create a class. We're going to do another profile, uh, sort of like uh, what we did in the data class, I suppose. And we're going to have our init that takes, you know, self. I'm just going to have name and age. We don't really need anything else. And then we can do self.name equals name and self.age equals age. And that is a perfectly normal class. What we can do is we can create a profile uh, of profile and then we can pass in my name and my age. And that works perfectly fine. However, what we can also do at this point is we can say profile.gender equals male. I am a male, therefore I, I am a male in my profile. I can then do print profile.gender. And despite it not really being a thing in the class itself, gender is now an attribute of it, and we can now print it out. So you can see it's printed out male um, here. This isn't necessarily desired behavior in a lot of instances. What you can do is you can implement slots. So slots are a dunder class attribute. So we define them up here. We can say slots equals this, and it is an iterable. So you can, it can be a tuple, it can be a list. It doesn't really matter. I normally say it as a, as I said it as a tuple because tuples are a little more lightweight. And what we can do here is we can define the names of the attributes we actually want to be part of the class. So we can have name and age. So now profile accepts name and age to be set. However, it does not accept gender to be set. So now if we you know, run it again, it will say profile object, uh, object has no attribute gender because it's not defined in the slots. So we are defining the attributes. This doesn't lock down methods. You can still add methods to the class as much as you want uh, using uh, you know, this method. But it just means that you can't do something like this where you're adding another attribute. If you did want to add another attribute later down the line, you could have that. And now it can be set. However, you would probably want to do something like self.gender equals like male or something here. And then you would, you know, set it later down the line. If you were to do that, just for you know readability sakes more than anything. Slots aren't just useful for you know gatekeeping and trying to keep a little bit of control over what attributes are actually assigned to your object. They also significantly lighten the object down because without slots. Uh, Python creates a dict for it. So if I just get rid of, if I comment out the slots for a second, you'll see what I mean. So if we get rid of this too, get rid of all this as well. And then we can print, uh, I was doing it right before, uh, profile dot and then double underscore dict. Well, this does, it has, you know, a dictionary of all of our things. If we then do uh, profile dot gender equals male, and then we print it again. I just realized I didn't like copy it <laughs> forehand that it's now added to that dict. And uh, every class has a dict like this. However, if you define slots, this actually overrides the dict. So we can actually now run this again. It will give us an attribute error because it doesn't even have dict available anymore. And But it does, I would believe, just have slots, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it has the slots there. So in not having this dict, we do two things. One, we save on memory because there isn't, you know, a dictionary object, which is huge. I can actually demonstrate that now. Um, so if I were to comment this out again, and if I do print, uh, I think it's uh, like dot size of or something. Is that correct? No, it's not. Oh, no. Hang on, because I, this needs to be dict. No, well, it is correct. There we go. So our dictionary is 88 uh, bytes in size, obviously in a bigger object. And with a lot of objects, that's going to stack up. However, our slots, which contains all the same things, is only 40. So it's less than half the size. So our class is now half the size. Editing me here, just wanted to jump in because I misspoke a little bit here. And I just wanted to clear it up because I knew someone would comment about it if I didn't. Uh, to say that the object is less than half the size isn't technically accurate. That's not taking into account, you know, other attributes and everything. The actual object is the same size, but the size of the object 
uh, that you get given by Python isn't the actual size that it takes in memory. It's a bit of a weird quirk, but the object is the same size. But because the dict or the slots are attributes of that and those are different sizes, the object takes a different amount of memory overall. But if you were to query the profile dot size of it would return the same number, which I believe is 42 bytes or 40 or something. I don't remember. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that. Otherwise, people will comment about it and it was a bit of a confusing statement. So sorry about that. I'll get back into the video now. The other thing we're doing is we're actually speeding up the creation of the class itself. So to demonstrate that, what I can do is I can import time it. Or actually, we'll do from time it. Uh, import time it. Okay, and I will have what you know. We'll comment this out, and then we'll do uh, so. We code equals that. Oh God. There we go. Code equals that, and then time it. Let's see what it is. So statement is just the code. The setup we don't need to worry about in this case. I don't think. I really hope we don't need to. And then the number equals, say, 10,000. So we're now going to create 10,000 um, classes, and then we're going to print the time it took to do that. <clears throat> uh, okay, so yeah, what we need to do is we do need to do the setup. So if I do setup, <laughs> it's always a bit awkward using the time it, I, think, I find, but uh, it, is, it is a useful tool. I might do a more advanced video on it. Oh, for God's sake, are you kidding me? Okay, there we go, I managed to get it sorted out. Right, if we have 100,000 maybe, that, yeah, so 0 0.02 if we don't have the slots. If we do have the slots, it comes out to, okay, it's a little bit quicker. Let's see if we can get a better indicator. 0 0.19 with slots, 0 0.19, 0 0.19. If we then comment this out, 0 0.24, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So you can see it is consistently slower. It doesn't appear to be that much slower in this case. However, it is a very small class with only two attributes and no methods at all. And there's also only one of them. If you're making a game or you know a bot or something that needed to be memory efficient and time efficient, and you were going to be creating a lot of classes, then having this memory saving of even just you know a small number of bytes when you multiply that by a million that becomes millions of bytes so you can see when the code starts scaling up that it's it's really good to be using slots especially if you're building like a game as i say or something like that other than that if speed isn't you know necessary necessarily a concern i can't speak at all today apparently um then it's still useful for you know doing what we did before in making sure that only certain attributes are actually um, created. It's also just good for readability. I find I quite like slots being there just so I know what's there and what's not. Sometimes in it can be really complicated and just having that there is just really nice. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say on slots. If you found the video helpful, then consider liking it to let me know. It helps out a lot. And if you have any questions, then leave a comment. I don't buy it, so you know, just ask anything you want. I'm here to help you, so don't be scared to ask anything. If you liked it, then consider subscribing. And if you really liked it, consider becoming a member or joining my Patreon. If you do that at £1 a month, you become on the screen like these people. And I will see you next time where we do it would be perfect Python again. I'm sorry videos have been so patchy. Um, exam revision and my sleep schedule have been messed up. I'm gonna I'm gonna do an announcement video slash update video in the next coming days that will you know go into more detail about that. But um yeah, hopefully things will be back to normal soon and I'll see you later for the Perfect Python series video that will be next, I think. Hopefully. I'll see you for that.